Whoa, Gene. That's how Keanu Reeves would do Wolverine. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Gene. That's uh, my Christopher Walken. Oh, I got it. Guys, we're gonna watch today from the cosmic wonder how Marvel's X-Men will enter the MCU. Everything we know, he has such good sources and he's been right many a times. Go follow his channel, I'll tell you why. You might have noticed on our community page, we put out a poll recently asking who do you think should be the next Wolverine? And that's because we are filming tomorrow with the cosmic wonder. We're gonna finally be doing a collab together talking about our thoughts on who the next Wolverine should be. You can go vote over at our community page. That poll is still up. And also wanted to mention with this quarantine situation going on, been posting a hell of a lot on Stardust, 30 second reviews for films, TV shows, and or trailers. Literally been catching up on so many different shows. It'll be worth your time. The whole thing is free to download, free to use, free for you to upload your own videos as well. Do it right when this video is done. How's it going everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things relating to Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And today we're going to be talking about something that everybody has been waiting for for a very long time. The X-Men's <laughs> introduction into the Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe. Now, ever since Disney acquired the rights back to the Fox characters such as the X-Men, Fantastic Four, Deadpool, and etc., everybody has been wondering exactly how long is it going to take for the X-Men to enter the MCU? Two months. And Phase although we all thought that it would be quite some time before we see the X-Men in the MCU because Marvel would want to take their time in introducing their characters and coming up with their plan. Kevin Feige name dropped them at San Diego Comic-Con in photo. 2019, <laughs> implying that they are going to be coming sooner than later. Now, considering the fact that Marvel hasn't really said much about the X-Men coming to the MCU, we actually know a lot about their plan of what they want to do with them, including how they are going to introduce them. In fact, it may surprise you on just how similar their introduction to the MCU could be to the Avengers, eventually going on to come together, form a team, and have an X-Men film. So in this video, I'll talk about everything we know so far about the X-Men coming to the MCU, including how they're going to be introduced, which X-Men are expected to be introduced, when they're expected to enter the MCU, and some leaks and reports that we have so far about the X-Men joining some of our current heroes in upcoming movies soon. Oh, if you're new, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all Marvel-related content and to enter my giveaway for a chance to win an Xbox One or a PS4. More giveaway details at the end of this video. So, as I'm sure most people know, Disney and Marvel Studios, since they are owned by Disney, have finally and officially acquired the rights back to the Fox-owned Marvel characters. These include the entirety of the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Deadpool, Galactus, Doctor Doom, and more. Ugh. And so now the question is, how is Marvel going to introduce these characters that have already been on the big screen before under Fox? Well, for starters, Marvel wants their X-Men in the MCU to be very different than the Fox X-Men. And they're not going to just come out and do an X-Men film like Fox did. There has to be a noticeable difference between the MCU's yeah, version yeah. of the X-Men and the Fox's version of the X-Men, and some time has to pass before a big X-Men film. And this is so people don't confuse the two franchises. Enough time has to pass to where people don't think the MCU version of the X-Men is tying into the Fox version yeah. somehow. Fair. And it's a lot yeah, harder true. for yeah. the X-Men, because the Fantastic Four are pretty easy. It's one team, it's now one film, and a villain. Would you be don't sweet. have literally <laughs> a lot of characters that you could use. So the Fantastic Four is relatively easy to do as long as enough time passes. And the sure, last Fantastic sure, Four sure. film was some time ago, so enough time has probably went by. Floppy. And not to mention the last film didn't tie into the original two Fantastic Four films, so the continuity isn't really a problem. So based off of that, and based off of what Kevin Feige has said in some interviews, we know that Marvel's going to introduce their MCU X-Men in a few different Efron. ways. And the first <laughs> yeah. way is one at a time. And this in itself could one be in several time. different ways. They could do solo films for new X-Men coming to the MCU, or they could tie them into other films with other heroes. For example, we have two oh, recent reports I, from Mikey yeah, Sutton, that'd be fellow Marvel different. insider. That'd be one unique. of his reports Maybe says that though. Rogue is going to be in Captain Marvel 2, and that Rogue is going to be the main villain. Ooh. Rogue is a classic Captain Marvel villain and in the film of course she would be a mutant but the film is still going to be Captain Marvel 2 it's not going to be an X-Men film or a film about mutants whatsoever but they're going to throw a mutant in there to be the villain almost Rogue. like they're not really making that big of a deal about it they're just going to gradually introduce them and build them up we then have another report from Mikey Sutton that states that the Illuminati is going to be introduced in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness <laughs> now in the original Illuminati team from the comics there are several mutants a part of the team and not to mention Mr. Fantastic 
Fantastic of the Fantastic Four, and one of the main leaders is Professor Xavier. Now, Professor oh, Xavier is an X-Men that everybody knows. Signature wheelchair, signature bald X? head. So you could introduce Professor X, X into the MCU at any point in time, and people will go... That's Professor Xavier. The X Men <laughs> yeah, are coming. That's true. But again, this is going to be during Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's not Brian going to be a grand X Men film. <laughs> so, this is an approach that Marvel is going to take to introduce some of these X Men, introduce them in other films without making that big of a deal about it. Another example is Black Widow. It's highly believed that we could see the very first mutant in the MCU as early on as the debut uh, of Black Widow. I actually Widow. really There's like that idea of just introducing that one at a time. Major will yeah. be in the movie. And although they may not come out and state that he is a mutant, Tent, he definitely is. Oliver Richards, aka the Dutch Giant, posted on Instagram before editing his post, stating that he was going to be playing Ursa Major. He then edited his post to make it not so obvious. But again, this is part of Marvel's plan. And not to mention <laughs> Disney Plus. Disney Plus is an excellent platform that Marvel could use to introduce many different mutants to the MCU because all of the Disney yeah. Plus shows are in the MCU. And in fact, most of the characters that get introduced in Disney Plus will most likely be on the big screen during some team up films. Yeah, yeah. And another thing to note about the introduction of the X-Men is something that Kevin Feige basically confirmed himself in an interview. And that is, we're not going to get the typical well-known mutants in the MCU. Yeah. Yes, we of course are going to get some main ones like Professor Xavier, but we are going to see a bunch of other ones that haven't really gotten screen time in any of the films. When speaking I love of that idea. I love that. The X -Men yeah. In the MCU and introducing them, Kevin Feige said in an interview, it's not just the marquee names, you know? There are hundreds of names on those documents on those agreements. The fact that Marvel is now as close as we may ever be to having access to all of the characters is something I've been dreaming about for my almost 20 years at Marvel. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So when the That's like a, be a great subtle build to it. We can expect to see some that, never thought of that. very popular <laughs> comments, but haven't really gotten any screen time in the movies. And of course, People right like now, Wolverine. Feige is really <laughs> on diversity in the MCU, and of course there are many diverse characters to choose from in the comics. But here's why introducing Perfect them one at a time, either in solo films, on Disney+, Plus, or in other MCU movies is a really good thing. And that is, they're basically copying the way that they introduced the Avengers. When the MCU started, they didn't just come out with an Avengers film. Would it have been popular and successful if they just did that? Of course. But would it have been as popular and as successful? No. The reason why the Avengers worked so well is because Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios introduced the individual Avengers one at a time in their own solo films. We got to know each character before they were a team and yeah. watch them go on their own yeah, individual yeah. journeys. Oh, this is great. My mind is spiraling right now. <laughs> for the X -Men, especially the ones that go on to become true X-Men for Charles Xavier. We're going to see who they were before and eventually Charles Xavier will recruit them and bring them to his school. And mm. that's when we will have our X-Men films. Film. It'll be done just like how they did the Avengers. They'll introduce Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, the Hulk, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and then have them all come together. Nick Fury brought them together in the film, and it's most likely that somebody like Charles Xavier will bring the mutants together in the X-Men film. Cool. So you'll have yeah. solo movies for people like Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops, and of course characters that oh, we may not really know. Cyclops. Then we'll Proper origin the movie of the Wolverine. Will be huge and Jensen so much Eccles? more satisfying because we watched each individual character be built up over time. Now, as far as when they are coming to the MCU, it's not as long as you may think. Again, Kevin Feige mentioned the mutants at San Diego Comic-Con, and he said that they have mm. all of Phase 5 already planned out, and he was going to reveal Phase 5, but he thought that everything in Phase 4 was already enough to talk about. But he made it a specific point at the end of SDCC to say mutants, Fantastic Four, and Blade. He would not name drop these <laughs> if they were not coming soon. Now, a couple of months ago, it was revealed that Patrick Stewart, who of course played Professor Xavier, the original Professor X, met with Kevin Feige about Professor X. Patrick Stewart revealed this in an interview what? when he said, I met with Kevin Feige a couple of months ago and we had long, long conversations. What? And there have been moves and suggestions which like include universe Charles tie Xavier. This is straight from Patrick Stewart's mouth. What? So it is 100% confirmed that this happened. And he said that as far as Charles Xavier is concerned, Kevin Feige has made moves and suggestions. So that officially confirms that plans for the X-Men in the MCU are already underway. Whether that's Ooh. introducing one of them or many of them in the upcoming future, we are going to see them in the MCU soon. And the film that is most likely going to set them up is The Eternals. 
Now, the Eternals themselves yeah, yeah. are almost, in a way, mutants. The Eternals were created by the Celestials, and they are described as an offshoot of the evolutionary process that created sentient life on Earth. Mm-hmm. In the comics, a million years ago from where we stand today in the MCU, the Celestials went to Earth and they did experiments on the early humans. The products of these experiments were the Celestials and their counterparts, the Deviants. Mm-hmm. Now, it's widely speculated that in the MCU, there could be another byproduct of the Celestial experiments, and they could be mutants. The mutants in the MCU's X gene could come from experiments done years and years and years before by the Celestials. It's Ooh, also been rumored that. that in the MCU, the Celestials are not allowed to have kids. Well, some of them most likely did, and the offsprings of those kids and so on and so forth could be the X-Men. So the All mutants right. are most likely going to arrive in the MCU as early on as Phase 4, maybe even as early on as Marvel Studios' Black Widow with the introduction of Ursa Major. So, the X-Men are coming soon they're going to come one at a time and be built up just like the original I Avengers am were. loving and everything I'm hearing X-Men film what do you think about this plan would you like the X-Men to be introduced all at one time in their very own film or would you like them to be built up just like the Avengers were let me know what you think about this in the comments down below and let me know which X-Men you would like to see enter the MCU first gambit subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date hey, on pretty. all things relating to hey, the MCU sure. and so you can enter my giveaway for a chance to win an Xbox One or a PS4 and picking a winner at 550,000 subscribers as always thank you all so much for watching woof woof <laughs> Boom! Great video, dude. Oh man, so much to talk about. So I heard a topic recently brought up, I think it was on the John Campia show actually, is the MCU's best days behind them now that, you know, Endgame has already come out. I don't think it is because once we start getting more solidified on-screen moments of mutants coming into the play, I feel like that's gonna give us a lot more to look forward to and a lot more to get truly excited about, Fantastic Four included. I think it's really cool that the first few phases of the MCU didn't have the X-Men world than Fantastic Four, yet it was such a monumental success and really changed cinema landscape. Now I can only imagine what they'll be doing with the accessibility to mutants and X-Men, and I do love everything I'm hearing here. If you guys saw, our, we did a video where new rock stars noticed us. In that video, I pitched my version, my idea that I've had of how I would personally introduce the mutants. And I don't wanna just repeat that. I wanna just go off of what's being presented in this video because I didn't think about the idea presenting them one at a time, kind of like the Avengers. Instead though, what you'd get is having a mutant here, a mutant there, appearing in a supporting role, and then you could transition to doing solo films of them, then eventually get your X-Men movie where Professor X is kind of the symbolic version of what Nick Fury has been for the Avengers. I think that idea sounds significantly cooler. John, thoughts? I 100% agree. I mean, I think that leaves you open to just so many options. I think it's fortunate, yeah, that Marvel had to really focus on streamlining one thing before getting access to all of these other keys to these other kingdoms. Yeah, if you took that route of introducing them like a Hawkeye or like a Black Widow as supporting characters or even as villains at the outset or something like that, build it up. There's just so much you can do. And for me, I always hope that when the X-Men start to spiral off into their own X-Men adventures, I would hope that maybe those films can take a slightly different tone than the greater MCU, perhaps, yeah. in a different scope. I just think there's so many chances. And also, I loved what he was talking about, them wanting to bring in the lesser known X-Men, because sure. I feel like the movies we've got up until now have given us a lot of characters, but the main ones we always focus on and hang with the most are some of the flagships. And I feel like at a certain point there's a lot of oh hey that guy showed up cool you wanted to see him on screen yeah. here he is for two seconds this is a nice chance to also do some service to characters who have shown up but haven't had their day right right i think what feige is actually attempting to do right now is something i've wanted to see done more of what's kind of happening with the spider-man universe every comic book character that has his own you know solo run pretty much has his own universe now yes we have the mcu but every one of these characters and especially the x-men lend them themselves to their own universe. And I think with having the Disney Plus shows and while we're connecting all these different characters and stuff, I think what he's really doing is is really making that universe trickle down into more little universes with all these characters. I like the idea of having an X-Men universe that does fully tie into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I like the idea of these like sideway entrances into the X-Men where we might not even see it coming. You didn't see that coming? Or it might not be fully on the nose. Let's say in Black Widow, this character is there, it is real 
but they don't call him a mutant in it. But down the road, we discover, oh, that seed was planted already way back when with Black Widow for the mutants. Same thing with Eternals. They, maybe they might have a little drop of the word mutants and maybe they don't, or maybe we or see X a character. Gene. Yeah, something like that, where it's so subtle, but they are slowly, like they planting the seed and they're slowly letting that flower bloom. <laughs> and then eventually you get like supporting characters in these movies, Rogue and Captain Marvel 2, and then you start getting standalone films. I've been saying for years that if they're gonna do Wolverine over again, why not attempt it with another origin tale? Because X-Men Origins Wolverine is one of the most panned films. It is, it it is awful. It's <laughs> such a bad film, a and I think movie. it's so damn boring too. And he deserves a great origin film. I love the mystery with his journey of, you know, with the amnesia and all that. If there's one of these origin tales that deserves a remake, it's Wolverine. It's Wolverine. <laughs> so while I love the idea of focusing more on the smaller characters, yes, introducing your Professor X, I think that's a great call. If you're gonna do Wolverine again, absolutely redo the origin movie of that. And I feel like that'd be a great way to reintroduce a new Wolverine as well, as opposed to strictly comparing him to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Yeah, which makes me curious about the fact that they had such long conversations with Patrick Stewart, partly because he brought up a good point at the beginning of the video. They've had the, you know, uh, Dark Phoenix, New Mutants is still flailing out in the breeze right now, so they want to distance themselves from the previous yeah. films, I would imagine. And that makes me wonder, are they talking to Patrick Stewart to do some kind of alternate universe thing, or is it just that he is so synonymous with that role that they're just like, I oh, will bring you over and recast everyone else or something I imagine like it's probably universe time. They're, they're opening up these portals with Multiverse of Madness, WandaVision. You'll want to get Patrick Stewart in there so that way to kind of hand it off again or something yeah, like that. Like and, and I wouldn't be opposed to that. I, I think that'd be really cool. Cosmic Wonder was talking about diversity in this video. Kevin Feige is a lot more adamant about getting a lot more representation in the films. X-Men is the perfect way That's to do it. Way. This is the way. X-Men dealt so much that the, the main about that. underlying theme <laughs> dealt with racism. <laughs> like, that was such a big theme. So if you're gonna get exceptionally more diversity where it doesn't feel like ham-fisted or, or, or on the nose, X-Men is the most natural way to go down that path. This actually got me more excited for it than ever before. They talked about introducing characters on the Disney Plus shows to go into the movies, but would you prefer, ultimately, an X-Men film or like an X-Men TV series? I mean, we have the, the animated series, but to have a live action with like full Marvel Studios production, I, you know? I like... think what they'll probably do is have some mutants who have their own series. Even though X-Men, like one thing that made it so special were its allegories and thematic explorations, I think we're gonna want to see big screen X-Men. I think we're gonna want to see the debut of that. So uh, I think we'll have like mutants. I think at the end of the day, we'll probably get them on the big screen, which is which is what I personally want to. I want to see them clash worlds yeah. with the bigger MCU films and stuff. I think that's what we've all truly been itching for. I think you got to satisfy that itch. <laughs> Book yeah. Drew Goddard now then. <laughs> yeah. Book a good ensemble guy. Subscribe to the Cosmic Wonder. Keep a lookout for that video. We'll be talking about our Wolverine fan casting, talking about the most voted ones that you guys put on the community page so go over there as soon as you can subscribe to the real rejects click that notification bell to get notified whenever we got a new youtube video up last but not least let's send this with a <laughs> mikhail linden i wrote you a story based on the first time we ever met i first met mikhail while working outside the casino royale he gave me a letter marked from russia with love on the front it read for your eyes only Oh no, I thought, what could it be? An odd job? Orders from Her Majesty's Secret Service? I took a quantum of solace as I opened the letter, but all I saw inside was a specter, a view to a kill. The building was set to blow, Feld, and it shook the living daylights out of me. I knew Mikhail had always been the live and let die type, but she only lived twice and I was determined to die another day. Should I choose to accept this mission, I began, but before more words could come, I felt something slide into my hand. It was Mikhail's license to kill. This left me shaken, not stirred. As my brain began to whirl, don't be an octopussy, he proclaimed. The world is not enough. Tomorrow never dies, and I've got no time to die just yet. He pressed his gold finger against my quivering jaws. Never will I say never again, I thought to myself. Sky falls the limit, said he, putting on his windbreaker. Once we get to the moon, I'm sure you'll make a great moonraker. And that's the story of my Thunderball, the spy who loved me, my diamond forever, my man with the golden gun, Mikhail, from Patreon. Did you see something? I don't, I don't know. Is there something back there?